So I've got to leave in like. <sighs> All right. Also, yeah. Let's watch a little bit of the first of ten. That's a good idea. That's fucking loud. Kuroda, Tominaga. This will give us good insight on why Kuroda thinks this is a not a shit matchup, since classically this is a shit matchup. Makoto, I've always just heard, is just really solid in footsies in this matchup. And Tominaga is no slouch. I don't think he's as good as Kuroda, but like, ooh, that was cool. I definitely think he's not too far off from Crota's level. I feel like the matchup could equalize it. Crota likes playing 3 out of 5 sets. It's kind of different. The way the meter works is different. I've seen that in a lot of Crota matches. Nice. The short and TX chop is safe, but it doesn't combo. It's just a low into an overhead, so people tend to block it wrong. I've heard people call this a 9-1. I don't think it's a 9-1. I've also heard people call it an 8-2. That one I could maybe believe. Kuroda says it's far more even. I forget what he says. But his is like 5-5 five five or some shit. I don't remember. I don't have the Kuroda tier list memorized. Kuroda thinks it's perfectly winnable though. Kuroda said Makoto was bad in a ton of matchups. It's hard to imagine that while watching this, though. It seems like in this matchup, Kuroda would be looking for an all-or-nothing super confirm. I mean, I don't think that nothing is going to happen very often. I think he's going to actually confirm it. But the problem is, um... He does need to land that super. And the opportunities are scarce. Hi, that Zig guy. You and Alex are actually quite similar. Greta loves to um, do like an option select like parry throw tech whenever someone dashes in on him. I think Alex is a little more hype. I don't know about far. And I certainly don't think hype is everything. Dang. Honestly, Tom Tominaga's making this look really bad. I 
I like tactics over wins over height. I like a thoughtful match. I want someone to win because they just completely outsmarted the opponent. God, Tomonaga's making this look bad. Tominaga's on the read right now. This is more on. Ooh. That was more one sided than it should have been because he guessed right a lot. Like, that was, like, really solid play, but it was also lucky. You know what I mean? It was both. I mean, that was only, like, a couple matches. Let's not throw away Corotta's tier list yet. Throws are virtually riskless in this game. That's why we're seeing what we're seeing. It's very difficult to punish someone for trying to throw you. It's easy to take the throw. It's very difficult to make them regret it. Ooh. That's a low. You have to low parry it. That was a nice comeback. Tomonaga should have just kept tossing him. Oh, nice reset. Makoto juggle. Curtis reactions are pretty good. Those aren't parries. Or did you just mean like a couple of rounds ago? Or like rather at the end of last round? That was pretty cool that he's like taking all these throws and yet he sees the jump and parries the jump on reaction. I'm not really sure how he's doing that. It's not guessing. He's, his success rate is way too good for it to be guessing. It really does look like he's actually shutting down Makoto's approach. I gotta give credit where credit's due. He does look like he's disassembling the character right now. He's making it look like she has no mix-up. Um, my usual answer for when people ask me that is um, in approximate order of most desired I want uh, Oro, Urian, Necro, Elena, and probably Vega. Those are the characters I really want to see return. I want to see a lot of new characters too, though. It's not a cute 
should be played defensively. It's just that his offensive options are garbage. He has like a really nice like command grab and a couple good normals and that's it. Like that could have been parried. And he's a charge character. So, ooh, look at that. That was the crouch stand to dodge throws. There is a bug in this game where if you're standing from a crouching animation, you cannot be thrown as Q specifically. I think playing Vega is really fun. I think Vega is a cool character design. I like his, uh, I like his, like, story, I guess. I like his visual design. Not really his story. This is starting to look a lot, a lot better for Kuroda. I feel like Makoto's not jumping enough at this point. I mean, he's jumping a lot. He's just only using axe kicks when he jumps. What makes Kuroda so good? He wins. I don't know how to answer that question. I guess I know how to answer that question. Well, I don't know. I don't know what it is about... <laughs> he has a lot of matchup knowledge. And, in, like, he's definitely a really good parrier. So, like, um... A lot of scenarios where other people will just block and get like a kind of good punish, he'll get up, go for a parry and get a really good punish. Parrying's not so simple that he just does it more than other people and he wins because of that. Knowledge reactions reads. He definitely has a lot of very specific knowledge about what a character can do at a given range, so it's nice. And his reactions, I don't know how good his reactions really are, or if he's just using like weird stuff I don't know about. I would believe in a heartbeat he knows what an SGGK is and that he can do one. I think his SGGK, SGGK game is actually pretty good. Oros is supposedly the best. Or Chun-Li's. Both have really good ones. A bag jab, huh? Thing about this is that like that kind of thing happens all the time. Like Kroda will get some kind of crazy like he'll get like a series of parries and then he'll only get like a jab or like a jump jab or something like that off of it. And it's like you did something really hard and you got a very small reward. And of course that adds up. He could have linked after that, I think. I think you can do crush jab link super too. I would think by even doing that crush jab that that's what he was looking for. I actually think three rounds is kind of fishy. It changes the way meter works. It's like a different game. This isn't going to kill? No, it's going to kill. Oh, it's not going to kill. Honestly, I feel like he should run the clock. Yeah, he just had that same thought. He like started moving backwards. <laughs> That could have been a super. He could be dead right there. There you go. That was pretty nice. These matches are so long. I'm going to leave at 7.10, I think. I want to watch.
watch all this. I'll probably put this up on my channel as like a part one, then watch another one later. Watch like part the rest of this and then part two and call it part two on mine. I don't know, I'm not really adding that much commentary to this shit. He's doing like parry into jump. I don't know what the fuck he's anticipating, but it's interesting. There's something fishy going on here. Hey, look at this. So every time Makoto's next to him, she's throwing him, right? Throw. 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 Oh, that was a crouch tag. That's what it was. That crouch tag was a crouch tag. In this game, when you do a crouch tag, it's, um... It still works, but it's, uh... It comes out as a crouch jab instead of a crouch, uh... Instead of a crouch short. And that's problematic, because crouch jab can be parried either direction. That's interesting. Tommy Naga could just, like... If he's crouch tagging, Tommy Naga could just jump in and then fucking high parry or low parry. And then he could just fuck him up. It's important to look at a scenario like this and then try and figure out that kind of thing. Be able to just diagnose like a like a simple solution. That is so much damage if it actually works. Hmm. Got him. That's parryable on reaction, I thought. From that range. I mean, it's parryable on reaction no matter what. It didn't look like he already committed to something. It would have been a rough parry, but... He didn't even get the first one. Threw before he hit the ground. The throw wouldn't have been a punish there anyway. Kroda's style of play is completely bizarre. Yet it appears to be working quite well. The, that axe kick, the thing about it is that it changes the jump, the parry timing compared to like a uh, regular jump in attack. Nice, this kills. Q cannot parry, er, cannot taunt in this matchup. The second he taunts, he eats a super 2 from Makoto. Or like an EX dash punch if she doesn't have bar. Or like a hard dash punch if she really doesn't have bar. Or like fucking a dashing command grab or something. That's like the one time. Or like after a super 2. He gets very few opportunities to to taunt. A bad 300 ping. It's pretty bad. It's noticeable. I don't like playing over 200, but 200 is playable. Nice. That was an insane punish. Over one ten is unplayable for me. You, you must have terrible lag lag up ah adaptation. If even 110 and above is unplayable. I can still hit combos in 200. Even like hard ones. I'd really like it to be like 60 or below in a perfect world. But I'm always like anything under 200 is fine. 
bump. I'm playing like 130 all the time. Oh yeah, EX dash punch, just a taunt. He really didn't... Mm, no, that taunt. There's no reason not to do it. Makoto actually doesn't get that much damage on a cornered opponent, and Q is perpetually cornered. Whoa, those throw attacks were kind of weird. It feels like Tomonaga's often hanging himself. Feels like he could be doing the safe things over and over. Whoa, that was a throw that wasn't teched. Jump parry into jab. Very safe, very unrewarding. You know what I want to see Tomonaga do? I want to see him just dash in and super. Because Kuroda's either going to crouch jab or he's going to, like, stand tag. That's a hell of a read, but I just want to, I want him to make a point. I want the point to be, if you're going to do this every time, I'm going to punish it really hard. Caught him trying to dash in. Bay caught me slipping. Oh, same deal. He's lost a lot of health for those two encounters. Matchup is looking a lot more fair. Ugh! Didn't I say something about all or nothing? That was a hell of a read. Didn't work at all. Anti-air hard palm. Clap, slap. That loses the jump-ins, I think. No red parry. Does Makoto even get a punish there? Without parrying it? Oh my god, Tommy Nog's looking invincible right now. The dizzy is imminent. Honestly, I don't think he's going to get dizzy, though. Ooh, what a nice punish. He's got the super. He got a taunt up for that. If he lands the super, it's almost over. I don't think it'll kill, though. No, I think it'll kill. Super plus follow-up. Now it'll 110% kill. But he still has to land the super, which is easier said than done. Mmm, it's like, that's not going to kill because of the taunts. Nice. He's just trying to, like, at this point, Tominaga's just trying to be as unreadable as possible, and he's doing a good job. I really need to go, but I don't want to stop watching. I mean, I don't really need to go. All I need to do before work is shower. I was going to eat too, though. But I'd rather watch this than eat. Yeah, fuck it. I'll stay around until 7.30. Hmm. Nice. This kills. Or does it? No, my work starts at 8. And it's literally one minute away. I literally sometimes leave at 7.59. And I get to work at like 8.01. And I've got to clock in before 8.07. That was really weird. He fukiyage and jump cancelled even though it was blocked. I forgot that was a thing. Fukiyage, like, it mostly only works on airborne opponents, or as a counter poke. 
it's so weird to see it see it hit a grounded opponent that like can block. So that you forget that it's even blockable. You forget that it's a move that can be blocked. And thus it was kind of surprising to see it be like, oh, this kills. Nice. It was kind of surprising to see it um, um, be jump cancelled on block. It's like surprising that it can be jump cancelled on block. I mean, I don't think there's any move that's cancelable on on... Super jump cancelable on on hit only in this game. Every move that can be super jump cancelled on block can also be super jump cancelled on hit, and vice versa. There aren't that many super jump moves. Twelve is close medium kick. Suddenly is close run house. I think a couple of Ibuki's normals. Or is close strong. Either hit. Not that many. Fukiyage. Nice. Whoa, I jumped short. Now they're both playing with fucking super light normals. It looks like it looks like Crowden needs to play perfect in order to equalize like uh Tominaga's general play. You know what I mean? It looks like Crowd is trying a lot harder to do the same effect. Very late attack, maybe to blow up a parry. Crota still plays weird as fuck. I didn't kill. Mm, he timed it so he'd only get one hit, and then Crota parried it like it was two, and then because he parried the second hit that never happened, or rather he only parried the second hit because the first hit never happened, um, he missed his punish window. That combo is so cool. That's Q only, I'm pretty sure. You don't see that throw very often. Red parry. Good one. Explains Tominaga's extremely bizarre offense. Dang. I still think you should jump in and then just pause for a second and then parry. Gonna need a lot more of those if he wants to win. Still needs one more to do, is he? That was pretty nice. That was really nice. It wasn't even that nice, it was just like fucking correct guesses. 
Certainly wasn't a give on Crota's part, though. Which is why it was nice to some degree. Nice. Patch up Fukuyaga, huh? That's just so weird. I've never seen two people play like this. Both of them are doing weird ass shit. It's like they're both super afraid of commitment because they want to retain the ability to block or parry. So they're just constantly jumping around and fucking staying on staying on the ground just to keep the um that ability. And only in very desperate times, like when they're right next to each other, do they chance like a, even a throw attack. Tominaga's definitely being a little bit more offensive though. If that only gets one hit, it does a lot of damage. Interesting. Nice Fukuyaga. This is suddenly looking really bad. Mmm, that was a hell of a read. Whoa, this could tie it up. Or it couldn't tie it up, but like, you know. This could be the difference between him getting dizzy and dying and him being able to get a comeback. He's already equalized the health. Q has a lot more health than Makoto. Even though Taunts is uh, the same, I think, actually. I think they're both 1200, naturally. But then factor even a single Taunt, that's a pretty big gap. Got him. That was really risky. But I think I saw the side of Makoto's jump. And that's like a two-frame super. So you got very little time to parry it after the super freeze. Thanks, FF Black Wizard. Appreciate it. I do it for the positive feedback. It dear hard slaps. Hmm, that was pretty nice. Looks like Toby Naga's trying to make a, a point to be a little bit more aggressive. But it's done absolutely nothing for him. I was thinking that he should have been. I was thinking that a lot of, like, I was thinking he was almost being predictable with how uh, incredibly stiff his offense was. And just because it was safe that he was thinking, like, he could just keep on doing it. And I was thinking he should do something unsafe, but, like, you know, just to mix it up. He tried to do that that round and he got creamed. So I take it back. He had the right idea from the start. Mm, there it is. It's always cool to see that. He forewent the... Uh, he could have had the follow-up for extra damage and one taunt, but instead he did two taunts. And tier dash punch, in fact, even in juggles, it's one of the only ways to get a taunt off in this matchup. Kurota proclaiming he's not helpless. Back strong, very appropriate time. Makoto gets nothing out of that. Very far connect jump fierce to jump right now. There's no follow up. Nice, Kara Karakusa. It's not over yet, though. Ooh, that looked out of range. It was probably out of range for a Q's throw. That's the thing. Well, I guess if he's scratch second, it doesn't matter. Well, yeah, it does if it's a Karakusa. What am I talking about? Nice, big damage. I think it was a Fukuyaga juggle he could have done that, that would have done more dizzy. I don't know if that works, 
pretty sure it does. Nice. That's a taunt. Forgot about that one. I haven't seen anyone use that in a while. Anti air hard slaps into taunt. But it works. That was a car. Ooh, nice. See, he got that sick ass red parry. I didn't even do that much for him. Got out of the corner, but there he is again. And he got like a throw's worth of damage. If red parry's always resulted in throws, I would never ever go for a red parry ever. This is looking good for Tommy. He can turtle it out at this point. He's got a big enough life lead. Oh, there you go. In order to win that, Kuroda needed a super setup, and it was unrealistic to get one. The only way he could have really landed one was a command grab. Santex now. Greta had previously fallen for that twice. In that setup though, Makoto's like meaty. So uh she can push a mix up. She can do that command grab or like a uh, stand fierce into dash punch. And it's a mix up. Can't throw her out of that stand fierce. Oh, nice. It hit midair, so I think he didn't have a follow-up available. You get anything? Nope. Toby, Tommy Naga. You were close. New looks like... Um, New looks like that. My Katakana is in top form. He could have just done a shit ton of jabs, I think. Actually, I think you can interrupt with like a jumping line normal. I think Makoto's jab isn't fast enough. Doesn't chain. I know it's almost time. Worst case scenario, I'll have a quick shower. And I'll just grab a fucking ice cream bar on my way out. And that'll be my lunch. I mean my dinner. I haven't seen like Street Fighter 3 play like like this. Like, this is some really high-level shit. I normally watch high-level shit, but this is, like, on another level entirely. It's fantastic play from both sides. This is a rare treat, and yet, I don't know, I could just watch a bunch of these. I don't know why I don't. They're out there. I'll click subscribe on this channel.
Two ice cream bars. Do you want me to get fat? I only even have one and a half ice cream bars. Wow. I'm more of a BBM. All right. All right, all right, all right. What does the 1.75 mean? I mean, I can see like a bunch of others from this channel. Just chilling there. Mm, he was too late. Does Kuroda have the download? Taunt. He didn't have the super bar. And he certainly wasn't looking for it. Nice. He got all three taunts up. If Tominaga wins this, it's going to be a nice long round. He actually did a fourth taunt. That one was for style. Like he forgot. I don't think he forgot. I only have 1.5. If I could have two ice cream bars, I'd be a fucking happy camper. Damn, he's almost at a second dizzy. That's how stupid this round is. Oh my god, he won! He won! Do you see how fucking huge of a comeback that was? That's as big a comeback you can make. Hold on, time out. That was three taunts though, right? Let's count them. That's the next round. Hold on, he already did one by this point. One. I'm going to miss focus tax. Two. Three. He has the maximum number of taunts. Four. What the fuck? Was it muscle memory? Was it meter build? It does build meter to taunt. That's a pretty crazy round. He really lucked out with that super. I've never seen a, a round that had two dizzies that didn't factor in stun gun headbutt or dungeon hadoken. I have seen Stun Gun Headbutt and Dungeon Hadoken rounds that had two dizzies. That was almost two dizzies. Anyway, it's time I started leaving for work. Thanks for sticking around for the stream, everyone. I'll probably... I might come back and stream when I get back. Or I might just go to sleep. But I'll definitely stream Bath Cup tomorrow.